Hello and welcome to this GAMS introductory video. It is part two of the GAMS introductory video series and builds upon the vintage cars and trucks model introduced in the first video. This time we will have a pure hands-on session and focus on good modeling practice, covering GAMS components sets, scalars and parameters and use them for separating logic and data in our GAMS model. This will help us to extend our model without actually touching the model formulation and just changing the data that goes into the model in a subsequent video. We will also discuss briefly variable bounds, especially pertaining to integer variables in GAMS. So welcome again and enjoy our hands-on session on good modeling practice. So welcome back to the GAMS studio. Here we see our vintage car model from last time. You will recognize a couple of the equations, our constraints, budget constraint, for instance, the number of vehicles we can store in the barn. We have two variables, x1 and x2, number of cars and number of trucks. And we do have a couple of numbers here, like this $1.2,000 cost of the trucks or the $2,500 revenue for selling a truck. And one of the not so good modeling practices is to include data like this deep inside the model formulation. It would be much more convenient to pull this data out, put it up front somewhere before we start the model formulation to be ready for changing the data and or pulling the data in from some external data source such as Excel spreadsheets, database, web interface, and so on. Another thing we see is that we do have a domain that spans the variables x1 and x2 and by domain I mean well it's the vehicle type. There is a number of cars, there is a number of trucks and it would be much more convenient and also more flexible and also better modeling practice to just have one variable number of however many vehicle types we have and just just have this variable with the multiplicity according to the types of vehicles we have. And in GAMS terminology, this would translate into a variable which is defined over a set, a set like a domain. So let's go ahead and do this and combine this set idea with the data pulling out idea to well, make the model a little bit more general and also ready for being enhanced in the future. So let's Place the cursor up here and start defining objects. For instance, the set. Let's call the set V, V for vehicle type. The explanation text is also good practice to put the explanation text in uh, quotes so that the GAM Studio knows how to, how to display it. What vehicle types do we have? Well, we have cars and we have trucks. Note the syntax. We have a set named V for vehicle types. We have an explaining text next to it that we know this explaining text from last time already. That's displayed whatever set V elements are displayed. And we can also hard code the members of the set between this slashes here. That's one slash that starts and the slash that ends the set definition. And the two elements of the set are called cars and trucks. Note that they do not have to be numerical, one, two, three, four, five. They can be just any string valued expressions. So we have like two vehicle types, cars and trucks. So what do we do with those now? Well, I mentioned before we have these numbers, like 2000 revenue for a car and uh, I don't know, 1.2 thousand cost for, for a truck. Let's pull these numbers out and define them as constants before we define our model. We can also use the set for defining the constants. So let's give another keyword, parameters. These are the constant values of models. And let's just define two parameters. One, let's call it cost of each vehicle. Let's call it vehicle cost. And go ahead and define it. Again, the slash syntax of define contents of, of objects. And we say the cost for cars should be $1,000. That's exactly 
in the budget constraint this invisible one multiplicator in front of the number of cars and for trucks the cost should be 1.2 thousand and we are done with defining the cost we do want to define another parameter called sell for selling price you can just do it in the same statement do a new line and format it nicely and say selling price of vqv that's really the selling price and that let's align it nicely also then the same game again for cars the selling price should be two thousand and for trucks the selling price should be two and a half thousand this will end our parameter definition so what else do we have if you just look down there wherever we have numbers we covered the revenue in the cell of v parameter here and we covered the cost in the cost of v that vehicle type of parameter here what we have not covered yet is the total budget we have which is just a number 3.6 thousand and we also haven't covered the number of spaces we have in our barn which is four we could also define parameters for that but in actuality these are just numbers they are zero dimensional they don't depend on any domain like vehicle type so what we do is we define them as scalars for the scalars which have two of them we have the budget call it spending budget we define it to be 3.6 thousand dollars and we have the number of spaces in the barn call it number of vehicle spaces and how many do we have four four vehicle spaces so whenever we want to change these data well we just go go ahead and change it here in the first couple of lines of our GAMS program we don't have to dive really deep into the model formulation but now we still have our integer variables x1 and x2 we want to unify that well, to be defined over over the, the set v so by doing that we just do away with those two lines x1 and x2 and after integer variables we just say okay variable x should be the number of vehicles and the reference to the set v tells the system that we have like one variable per each element of the set v which is cars and trucks in our case just let's call it number of vehicles free variable stays the same as before just in order to have it all in one one page we will just pull it down here and also quote the explaining text the equations stay the same we have a revenue equation which is the objective function just put it between quotes we have the budget equation which demands that we stay within our spending budget and we have the cars in barn equation in order to be ready for later enhancements we will just call it equation barn which governs the maximum number of vehicles in the barn let's call it vehicles so far so good but now we have the definition of the equations and here we need to do some changes because we renamed the the variable from x1 x2 to just x of v and we also have parameters that take the values of two and two and a half for the uh, for the selling price of the of the vehicles so what we have here is that z our total revenue equals the sum of each variable x multiplied by whatever the selling price is and we can formulate this in gams almost in the same way as we speak it or as we write the formula so we do away with this, this expression and we tell the system well the value of the objective function is the sum What's the summation index, so to say? It's the elements of our set V. So for each of the elements of our vehicle set V, we sum up the number 
of vehicles x of v times whatever the selling price is for this particular vehicle so that's the expression for the revenue for the budget it's the same game again we multiply the number of vehicles with the cost of buying them and that's left hand side of our budget equation the right hand side is the total budget we have so the left hand side again is a sum over all elements of the set v and what do we sum well we sum the number of vehicles times the cost of each of these vehicles and i just need to be careful to really match the parentheses and this has, this has to be less than or equal to 3.6 which is our spending budget so we just write budget our scalar finally the last equation the cars in barn or as we now call it just barn equation if we get x1 and x2 to the left we see that the sum of all the vehicles must not exceed the number of spaces in our in our barn so we write the sum over all vehicles, number of vehicles, sum of v, x of v, less than or equal to the number of vehicle spaces, which is just the, the spaces scalar. Just put it down there. Now we're almost done with our generalization. What we do have is here a upper bound of a variable x2 dot up. This will not work anymore because x2 doesn't exist. We, should, we have the variable x now. So we say instead of x2, x dot up. But which x? Well, the x that corresponds to the truck's entry of the set v. That equals to 2. The rest is the declaration of our model that stays the same, as well as the solve statement. But down here, the display statements will be displayed the solution values. Instead of x1.l and x2.l, we just display the level values of the x variable field along with the value of the objective function. And now we can go ahead and execute our model. So again, either the F9 key or just the run entry here. Let's do it. See the model output there. We do see the vintage.lst file, which is the list file echoing how the execution of the model went. And by scrolling down, same game as, as last time, you see an echo of the, of the input because we chose to admit that. We do have then a listing of the equations, which is right here. Equations are called revenue, budget, and barn. And here we see that the system spells out the equations in their entirety. So x of cars times 2, which is the selling price for a car. And we have the x of trucks, number of trucks times selling price of the trucks, negative because it puts everything to the left, uh, plus revenue equals 0. You also see here that the equations are sorted in an order such that all the constants are to the right, the 0 here, and all the expressions depending on variables are on the left hand side of the equations it's again visible here in the budget equation that we have the variables multiplied by their buying price to the left and to the right we have the total budget 3.6 we scroll further down same game as last time we see the variables x cars and x trucks and we have attributes to the variables lower level and upper bounds and also the the marginal value we set the upper bound of trucks to two because we have at most two large spaces in our garage and we see cars has a strange upper bound of 100 which is not infinity as we would assume but just 100 and the reason for that is due to compatibility issues uh, to older games versions this default value of our upper bound of 100 is deployed for for integer variables except GAMS is told otherwise and uh, right below the variables we have a comment here integer plus infinite bounds have been reset to 100 see option int bar up and that's a hint that we there's an option 
telling GAMS to change this upper bound behavior. So if we just go back and try this into our up option, let's just copy this so that we don't have to type it again. And go to vintage 2.gms and just enter this option here and say, well, this option shall be equal to zero. And then execute the model again. We are put again to the LST file, but this time we have a upper bound of plus infinity. And no warning anymore that the upper bound of integer variables has been preset. That's just a little remark on uh, yeah, standard behavior of GAMS when it comes to, to integer variables. Here's the total revenue. That's the variable capturing the value of the objective function. And uh, as it has to be the case, the, uh, it, it's a free variable, so it's negative infinity lower and positive infinity upper bound. If we scroll further down, we get model statistics. Just note that the blocks of variables, they're not anymore three blocks of variables, but just two blocks of variables. One block taking both values for the x, the number of cars and trucks, and the other block taking the value of the, of the objective function, but still the same number of single variables because we have like two vehicles and one objective function value. If you scroll further down, we see that we have normal completion, optimal solution, objective function value of seven, the same as last time. If you scroll still further down, I will not comment on, on uh, gaps and other settings of the, of the MIP here. We see the solution value display one car and two trucks leads to the optimal value. And that concludes our little example on how to introduce parameters, scalars, and also variables that are defined over domains, which are given by sets, in our case, one set, taking the vehicle types. Thank you for watching this movie. For more information, please feel free to check out our sites on the internet or drop us a message. Also, below this video, please let us know what you liked about it and what you would like to see in future videos. I'm Thomas Meinl. Thank you, have a good day and see you again soon.